So, hello, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Let's see if I get this right. It's Monday. Um, yeah, this weekend, a lot of very intense frequencies. Um, my dog is doing actually really well. And why do you say that? Because we are keeping up with the competition within her body. We are assimilating to that sister that she has on her body. And we're not attacking it. We're respecting it. We're feeding it and her at the same time. I could see glimpses of old memories. Like she remembers how to maybe drink water. She'll remember how to jump off the step. She'll remember. She even... So she would like regress for maybe a day or two where you're like, holy crap, is this she going backwards? <laughs> and then you see how skinny she'll get because that thing is producing a lot of energy. And so then when I power feed her, um, then she gets her memories back. She becomes stronger. And then you see a glimpse of her coming back again. And so it's like this constant ebb and flow of memories being developed and memories being lost and memories being developed. Even given her bath this morning, it was pretty cool because she still didn't react like she used to a few years ago where she was adverse to baths and, and being put in water. And so so that's a good thing. Um, and so, yeah, and even the cyst itself, I mean, you see the eye of it. You see where they've aspirated it. And, yeah, it could look a little red. It could look a little raw. And I put olive oil and salt, and she handles it fine. She doesn't like whine so much um you could hear her breathing sometimes a little bit harder just because her body at these frequencies it, it, her body is going through an energy conversion and you have to keep up with it and yeah it's going to be touch and go ebb and flow and you just have to keep feeding the situation keep feeding and then removing the old programming so which i am doing i am going i'm helping her go through that process of bringing in the food to feed both her and that entity and then also releasing the demons on the back end. And if I am not doing that, then she would not survive this energy conversion. And that's essentially really what's going on is that people don't know how to do this. And so their animal ends up succumbing to her, the closed system that was trained by the medical veterinary system. And then that's why people have lifespans. And so last night I was blowing my nose like you would not believe. Last night it was insane. Blowing my nose, blowing my nose, blowing my nose. And it was and she was up too, up and down, up and down, up and down. Um and, and that was fine because, you know, I'm used to it. I know what I'm in for. And it is again a day daily, day by day, hour by hour process. And she knows she is now trained to go to the restroom in the bathroom. And I have pee pads. I even have a sheet over the pee pads so that way she doesn't slip around. But she's actually even uh, today, this morning, she surprised me when she jumped off the step. And it surprised me that she was able to do turns without, you know, falling on that one leg. Because that one leg has been weak, which is what was giving her that potential diagnosis of a luxating patella. But, but today it was different. Today, like she was walking without really any kind of weird limp or weird weakness um she still slips and slides occasionally on the on the hardwood floors but it wasn't today it wasn't as bad as it has been and so those types of signs encourage me just to keep going because sometimes you'd be like dude what am i doing is this is this all for not i mean am i wasting my time wasting this food no it's just that everything takes a minute it's a process nothing is instantaneous and you have to keep fostering the situation you have to keep sustaining the situation with food releasing the programming and that's what i did the last six years to myself was it was a six-year process of of always adjusting relative to the changes in the environment and the changes in my immune system and not just sticking with the same thing and expecting a different result no it's sometimes you have to adjust your schedule adjust food intake adjust all the things that you kind of get used to into a routine, but then sometimes routines have to change in order for you to deal with the changes in the, in the body and get to that next level of memories, evolution, innovation, um, maturity. And so I'm like basically raising an animal 
that is juvenile in an adult body, but she still is like a puppy. And she's also sugar. She still like, you know, chews on my nose sometimes. She licks it, okay? Um, and she knows that I'm helping her. She knows this. If I wasn't around, she would die. Literally, if I was not around, she would die because no one would be doing what I'm doing. Nobody would. Even my husband, I finally told him that I do pull out the poop and he was just like, he was shocked. He was like, holy shit. Because he, he doesn't listen to my videos and I don't blame him because he sees it, he hears it every day and so he needs to have his own thing going on, which is fine. So when I told him, the reason why I told him is because somebody else in his world dealt with an animal that had a cyst that they didn't get, you know, taken off, you know, because the animal was so old. And so they, they experienced that animal dying from septicemia when the cyst ruptured and it poisoned the system and the dog passed away. And so that's what my husband was thinking. Then I'm like, well, my husband, oh, husband, did they open up the dog's back end and pull out the poop? And he's like, what? You do that? He's like, he, I, he was a little shocked. It took a minute for him to kind of just <laughs> deal with that, with that information. But that's essentially how I saved myself. And so my dog system is no different than mine, except that it's in a smaller scale. And I have no adversity to poop. Poop is just processed food. And it is the life force in you if it's programmed with, 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 the, with the whole, well, I don't say whole, with, with undamaged cells, but it's just waste material from things. I guess, I mean, you could say there's damaged cells in there, but it's, it's not anything that um, I, I'm afraid of. I mean, once you figure out that poop is just your body's way of releasing the demons and it's not a biological hazard unless you have a closed system and sensitive to the environment, I can handle dealing with my dog's, you know, um, excrement and pee and whatever. And, and it, it's just, it's just her going through a process. And so if you want to save yourself and save your animal, you won't be squeamish about anything that is coming out. Now I would not do any kind of cutting into an animal. I would not deal with that kind of blood. I would never want to be a surgeon or a nurse for anyone else but my own family. I, and I wouldn't even be a nurse or a surgeon at all. I, I mean, my husband says, don't ever pull out the poop in my ass. I'm like, don't worry. You pull out your own poop if you want to, which most likely he won't. So, so, and that's the thing. So yeah, I could never cut into any animal. I can never do anything like that. And so what would we do with her cyst with that little eye with that? It sometimes it gets red sometimes. So I put a little bit like, again, put olive oil, a little bit of salt and sometimes a, a warm compress. And I just, you know, let her know and it know that it will be well taken care of that. We're not going to try to rupture it. We're going to be gentle. I'm not going to, you know, make her be so active to rupture it because that sometimes people's you know, ideology is like, oh, if, if we accidentally rupture it, then she, they can be, it could be drained, but you don't want to do that. You have to allow the body to go through that process. And so I'm gentle with her, gentle with the cyst, so to speak. Um, though I, I do use food on it. I mean, olive oil and a little bit of salt is not a bad thing. Salt and water, not a bad thing. Um, and, and so, and, and she gets the food and I help her up and down the stairs. Sometimes I even carry her and, and I'm used to it. I'm getting stronger. And yeah, and so, you know, I would have had a diagnosable condition if I hadn't opened up my cyst in the last couple of years because last night the frequencies were so insane. Or I was just blowing, I was blowing my nose. Hawk, even yesterday I was hawking up a few lucas, but nothing was green or brown or anything colorful. It was just clear mucus. But why was that going on? Because Remember, the Kraken is the next virus, the next, you know, frequency that is going to bring up, you know, the, the tridemic that's going on, the RSV, the COVID, and the influenza. And extreme hot and cold temperatures will bring that up because it's an energy shift. It is an evolution. It is climate change. And climate change causes people to get sick because it's the body releasing the old and trying to take on the new. As you know, people are actively starving themselves. They are actively undergoing so much surgery and so much uh, remedies that at some point the energy conversion will convert them out of existence. And so, and so watch my dog go through this just then confirms the fact of my disgust with the surgical industry, my disgust with 
the, the any kind of remedy industry because even if you don't get a surgery and you take the remedies, you're trapping the damaged cells and even nefarious cells in your body, which is why then people who have dementia are so mean. See, I know people that are dealing with loved ones who are dealing with dementia and the dementia has caused them to be so abusive in the language that they are like being possessed by nefarious damaged entities. And that's why I, you know, I'm so happy that my mom figured out her stuff on her, you know, and she has a big family because I don't think I could take care of someone who has dem dementia. But then there's my husband. Will he have dementia down the road? Well, he's a typo, so I guess that's a good thing. Um, I hope he doesn't get dementia down the road where I have to deal with that because, yeah, I mean, that would be very difficult to deal with, but I'm prepared for that. And if I am way beyond my capacity, then I will ask the system for help as much, you know, so I'm prepared for that with my husband if that ever happens. But that that's the thing is when people are using the holistic system to trap damaged entities in their body and they're administering the holistic system onto their kids, trapping damaged cells in their body, you wonder why these kids end up either really malnourished, emaciated, or morbidly obese because the parents keep trapping damaged cells in the body. And so and so right now my dog is releasing the damaged cells. So she she would have these skin tags that would be like kind of under the fur. You can feel a little bit. Now they're finally growing and they're they're gonna grow and then they're eventually they will fall off at some point. But the body is pushing out the damaged cells. And that's probably what's in that cyst is a bunch of retroactive hormones from, from the, the trauma from being cut into as well as damaged cells. That's why her face and her fur are so soft and, and she looks youthful and her nails look good. I mean, and, and so that's because the body had corralled all the damaged stuff, but now it's working on releasing it. Okay. And so that's why it's in that cyst form. That's why there's skin tags because that's the body corralling the damaged stuff and pushing it away from the good stuff. And eventually that stuff will be converted or released. And so that's why you have to keep pulling out the programming because that's all the damaged stuff as well as other stuff, waste material, that needs to leave the body. But people don't like release. They don't like to feel pain. They don't want to poop. They don't hardly want to pee. Maybe they want to pee, but they're afraid of their poop and they're afraid of mucus. They're afraid to blow their nose. They're afraid of all these things. They're afraid of ear infections. And so they take all the antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, and trap all that damage within. And then down the road, when they get dementia, they have now damaged cells in their body that are taking over and then cause them to be destructive to the people that, that actually love them or are their, you know, their daughters or their sisters or their, you know, husbands and wives and all that. So, you know, but I've never, I have not seen any kind of, um, aggression, aggression from my animal. I mean, sometimes like when I, when I move her, She'll like open her mouth as if she was going to bite me, but she doesn't bite me. She just like, she says, that's her way of saying like, okay, stop moving me this way. And I'm like, okay, I understand. But she never, she has never bitten me ever, 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 ever. She doesn't have that within her. And I'm actively releasing the damaged cells. So that never comes up because she has no reason to bite me. Okay. Even through this, this memory loss that she's going through, she is not an aggressive dog at all. She, my dog is Probably the, that's why they called her sugar because she was the sweetest even when she was going through those surgeries. And so, you know, so I just keep taking care of her and, and, and just, you know, allowing her to be whatever she is. And I, and again, it's 24 hours. Like last night, I was up in the middle of the night. Every couple hours, I she would, she would wake me up and want to, you know, get up because she would lay on her tail because that's how the only way she can lay down because that cyst is like, she can't lay on her belly because her cyst is there. So she lays on her butt and then she, and then her top side she lays and then gives room to that cyst. So it's kind of this, this little bulbous thing. And so then when she wants to get up, it's hard to leverage that because she doesn't have her tail to do that because her tail's tucked underneath. So then I help her up. So every night, you know, and I, or when she's walking around the room, when she goes to the bathroom and she walks around and she needs help up on the bed, she'll hit my, my foot because my foot's like maybe hanging off the bed. And I wake up and then I... Or I'll see her kind of lounging on the, her little bed that I, that's on the floor too. In case I don't wake up, she has a bed on the floor that's even lower than the bed I have. <laughs> but she still wakes me up and I help her. So I'll get up, you know, and in my zombie state and then just pick her up and put her onto the bed and 
position her so she they can back up and lay down and, and go to sleep and then she'll have to get up sometimes and and it's and I'm I I I like doing that because I know that eventually she will be self-sufficient. It's just going through this process. And that's with humans too, but some it's you know, I mean, she right she reminds me of what Ashton Kutcher probably went through when he couldn't walk, when he couldn't talk or he couldn't move or whatever. I'm sure he had to go through so much therapy in the medical system. And I'm not, you know, doing therapy on her, but it is a day by day process. And it took him, I guess, I guess it took him a year to, to, to learn how to walk again and, and do whatever. And so I'm not saying it's going to take a year for her because she has been going through this, these processes. Like I actually, in my gut, know that there is improvement. Even though, yeah, that, that, that cyst, that medical trauma, that, that cellular retribution is like, looks angry. <laughs> I see the improvement in the way she walks. I see improvement. I mean, she regressed really quickly where you're like, whoa, she's not even drinking water out of her own dish. So I'm actually, so that's why I had to figure out oh, how much water does an animal that's like 40 pounds, they need like five cups. So which means that for me to give her water, she needed like, like, like 12, like was it 16 ounces? She needed like, like the like 12 little bottles that I have, the tiny little bottles. But even then, you know, she's not going to drink that much water. But I make sure that even with every time that I give her food that's really thick, that she has water with that. And so, you know, she drank water the other day for a minute and then she stopped doing that. So then, I'm, you know, so I'm still, you know, basically doing everything for her. But it, it's but it, but it, some days I see a glimpse of, of her, her independence and her wanting to be independent. Other days, it's just like, whoa, it's regression and it's back and forth, back and forth. But she's still maintaining her weight. And when I see that she's getting skinnier because that thing is very active, then I keep feeding her and pulling out the program, keep feeding her and pulling out the programming. And that's how I'm able to beat this thing. Not literally beat it like, you know, physically beat it, but that's how I'm able to keep up with that entity and not disrespect it. Because that's why she has that cyst because people disrespect the things that are in their body. And they're using aggressive remedies, aggressive um, elements against the the entities in their body and those entities will come back and bite you in the ass oh they will anything that you attack in your body with a remedy holistic or otherwise surgery uh, definitely it will come back to bite you you might be like oh yeah i got rid of a tumor got scooped out and surgery taken out and you're all happy and then you realize that my information comes out you want to live longer than what was set for you and then you have to revisit all that medical surgical trauma and it could come out to be a huge cyst that you can't now go and attack anymore. Now you have to live with that until that thing is able to be converted into you. That's the, the, the cellular retribution that people and that will undergo once they figure out my information actually makes sense scientifically because that's exactly what's going on with my dog. She's dealing with cellular retribution from all the aspirations, from all the, <laughs> the surgeries and whatever else that was used on her in the veterinary system. And so, yeah, all the religions, all the spirituality, all the, you know, the, the Buddhism, everything is about biological karma, biological karma. And what something, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, but what is you, what is you referencing? Well, if you're attacking a tumor in your body, you're making it stronger. But when I got the tumor scooped out, it doesn't come up anymore. Oh no, it's spread and now you're aging. Now you're becoming weaker. The medical system, Imhotep and all those thereafter, all the surgeons out there and all the scientists figured out how to program a society, which they did a very good job. So we're going to have segments of our society that are going to go undergo medical trauma, undergo holistic trauma, and then eventually find my information and now have to pay back whatever attacks they did to their body and it's going to be hell for them. Some people, some people won't, they know how much surgery they went under for many, many years. And they don't even want to attempt to go and, and, and do what I'm doing because they have so much medical trauma. They don't, I mean, you could probably survive it, but yeah, you're going to look like something like a monster on some level because when you have surgery on your head and surgery in your mouth and surgery in different places that even clothing can't cover, you're going to have to deal with it and lug those things around and, and have lumps and bumps that you're going to have to deal with without attacking it elementally or chemically or surgically. You're going to have to carry around and deal with it and face the demon. 
that's literally what the whole JJ world's about. It's about facing the demons and, and paying back what you did to your body for violating the laws of nature. That's what medical holistic system does. They violate the laws of nature. And, and so that's why they have always promoted that you should die someday because if you actually were to pay back what you did to your body, people would then realize that the medical holistic system was not natural. Even the holistic system is not natural. They violate the laws of nature. And so then it, it forces even those in the religious world who are all about natural remedies to face that, oh, maybe some parts, aspects of their religion about, oh, the holistic world is so much better than the allopathic, even have to question those who are promoting all the holistic remedies and then maybe even question their own religion, uh, which then even makes them question their whole meaning of life. And then that's just too much for some people. So that's why I get a lot of hate mail. Because people have been raised in really aggressive, very dogmatic religions that also bring in the health and wellness world. And when they realize that maybe that was a programming that caused them to want to pass away and never pay back what they did to themselves in society, then they're like, what is their meaning? What, what, what was it all for? Why, were, why are they here? And then you realize that maybe the Anunnaki brought people here to be a slave for certain people. And so what's a slave mentality when you program them to think that, okay, you work for, 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 you learn something for, you know, 20 years, you learn stuff and you go to school and then you work for another 20 or 30 or 40 years and then you decline for another 20, 30 or 40 years. And that is what people's lives are. They are, they've been pigeonholed, they have been programmed and they have been justified to pass away and then go through all the medical holistic trauma. And then when 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 even the absolution of the medical system can't hold back what's inevitable, which is the body wanting to live, then the people then say, okay, it's time for a euthanasia. And so people are doing that now. They're going through self-euthanasia right now through the medical and the holistic system. But you couldn't tell them that. Remember, they all expect to pass away someday. And they all want absolution from the medical system and the holistic system. And that's fine. Okay, we have, again, 7.98 billion people, a lot of redundancy in our population. Obviously, the system knows that many people are expendable. There, there's too many clones in our society, and they have to cut down the population because we have a lot of intolerance. And when you're intolerant, you're not going to evolve, and then you will destroy others that are trying to evolve. And obviously, the system can't do that because that's how you destroy humanity. That's how humans become extinct because we have many people who are intolerant that want to destroy others who are trying to change. And so then you see when people are saying, oh, you should put your dog down, take your dog to the vet. They are the ones that can't evolve. They are the ones that destroy evolution and innovation in our society. And so that's why we're in a great reset because many, many people fall under that category. And that's again, who I had to deal with for many years in the JJ world. Those who could not evolve, those who could not take out my information and even evolve with it. And so I had firsthand knowledge of dealing with the most intolerant population ever, ever. And so, and so anyways, um, but I want to give you, uh, you know, just an update on what's going on in my world. But yeah, if I hadn't opened up my system and released my demons, if I hadn't learned how to blow my nose so hard and hawk up the loogies and be okay with that, then yeah, I would be harboring damaged cells in the body that would then torture me and turn into something that would be almost irreversible unless I'm willing to deal with the massive amounts of pain. And so a friend of mine also was saying that she has uh, inflammation on her chest from this last frequency, like a rash on her chest. So she probably dodged breast cancer or some kind of breast issues. And so I remember getting hives a couple of years ago when I was, when it was like, oh, I don't know, it was like 20, 20, 21. And I was out there on the deck just pounding. I had so much energy because the frequencies were so insane. And I was chipping ice on the deck because it was so cold. And then I come inside and all these hives were just, just all over my chest. And I was, it was itchy. I was itching. And I showed my husband, he was like, oh my God, you know, he's like, you know, just take off your clothes and go to bed and go to sleep. And I'm like, okay. And so I did. And then they were gone the next day. I didn't put anything on them. I didn't have to do any kind of treatments. I just let them express, let it be itchy. I just sat with it. And the next day or so it was gone and they would come back a little bit, but less and less as each time they would come back, be less and less and then non-existent. 
And that's how it has to work is that your body releases things slowly. But yeah, people are, they want everything instantaneous, everything instantaneous. And that's why the cures market is FDA approval type of stuff, because you can't claim a, a remedy or, you know, a cure without it going through double blind studies, because you're not supposed to instantaneously stop your body from evolving, because that's then called almost basically death. And so when you are bringing in very strong elements in the medical or in the holistic allopathic world, some of them could be very deadly. And so that's why the, the FDA and even the system, some of the scientists were going after those who were in the holistic world making claims to having these different cures for these different diseases because they were using very aggressive elements that were prematurely cutting people's life force down and then uh, people would die prematurely because of how aggressive those cures were because they, they, didn't, they didn't get FDA approved. And that's why, that's why you don't want to be cured. You want to feed and deal with the stuff and then eventually the the disease and, and the inflammation will be less and less and less, but it takes time and you have to be patient. You have to feed the body all food. I mean all food. Meat, milk, cheese, eggs, fruits, vegetables, carbs. You can't be non-GMO. You can't be organic. You can't be just a vegetarian because you can't just live on soy protein alone. You need, in this environment, you need a huge arsenal and you have to deal with pulling out the poop programming, of which I did that this morning. Like, seriously, I was pulling out to, oh my gosh. And and I was blowing my nose, pulling that out, blowing my nose, and now I'm fine. But if you were listening to me this early this morning, I felt, I sounded like I was congested. Well, yeah, because whenever I'm congested up here, there's stuff down there, and the body is releasing demons from an energy shift, from, an, from a frequency shift, and so the body is now releasing. And so I know how to release all the demons in my body so they don't haunt me down the road in the future. And that is respecting the future by understanding what to do today. Because today is the future. If you don't understand how to open up your system, release the demons and feed your body and deal with the pain, then you don't have a future. You really don't because eventually the, 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 the future will catch up to you from what you're doing today. And so... And so anyway, so, you know, my dog, I'm, everything I'm doing is what I did with myself and she will be going through her own processes. I went through my punishment for violating the laws of nature with the medical holistic system the last 40 something years. She now has to go through that process of whatever the prior owners did and whatever the veterinary system did to her. But she is, but she is in well, she's in, she's in good hands. She's well taken care of and absolutely respected. And I am there for her 24 seven because I have the time and I have the desire to keep my own animal alive. And she is, she's doing well and she can handle this. And, and, and this, yeah, this morning, even yesterday, she was walking really, she was walking great. It was as if like she, like she learned how to assimilate to that thing, that sister on her body. I'm going to call it sister because that's why they call your religious friends sisters. That's why they call your sister your sister if you're related. It's basically a parasitic entity. When you have sisters out there, you're all parasiting off each other. Yeah, maybe you're supporting, but you also could be taking each other down relative to your lifestyle and belief systems and religions. And, and yeah. And so... She has a sister on her body that I'm supporting both and eventually one will win. And that's the thing out there is that even though, you know, you're all sisters out there in, in your politics and your religion, your science and your families, one is going to be stronger than the other one. But then eventually, you know, if, if the stronger sister beats out the weaker sister and lives longer, she'll eventually, you know, dissolve into the, into the environment because she hasn't learned anything but to, parasite and not take care of herself literally and so yeah do i want any sisters out there <laughs> not necessarily i want you to be independent i want you to be self-sufficient i don't want any sisters i don't want you parasite off me i don't want parasite off of you i want you to learn how to understand how to take in the elements and release the demons and become a whole person not a sister and so yeah even the the destruction of humans is in the language. It's in all your families. <laughs> That's really what's, what's kind of a kicker about all this. 
is that people do speak destruction into their world by their politics, religion, or science, and in their families. Which is why families are great, so you can see who the strongest, you know, prototype is, but then somebody sacrificed in those families. And it's the weakest person. And you see who the weakest person are because they don't survive climate change. All right, that's it. I gotta go. Bye.